This is the most perfect structure in all of carpentry. I know it doesn't look like much, but there's a principle at work here. And if you understand that principle, you can make literally everything you build stronger, more elegant, and you can often build it with less material. Today, I'm gonna to explain why this simple principle works so well and how you can utilize it in literally thousands of different ways. This is a thing that newcomers always overlook and even some pros, so it's a great thing to learn early on. And if you are still learning carpentry, remember that we discuss these concepts and more in our free PDF guide, The Ultimate Carpentry Checklist. This interactive ebook details every important topic in carpentry, from tools and fasteners to materials and joinery. It's completely free, and you can get it in the links below or visit us at thehonestcarpenter.com to find out more. All right, let's get on with the strength hack that will amplify all of your projects. The principle at work here has to do with span strength, which is essentially the amount of load or weight a structural member can carry across an open span. When new DIYers build a table or a shelf or a ramp, they'll usually just lay their material across their open span and hope for the best. And often the end result is that their shelves or tables will sag badly. And they'll usually think, well, it just wasn't thick enough. I need to make it thicker. And yes, a thicker slab of wood would have more strength across an open span. But that solution really misses the point. The real issue here is that they're failing to unlock all of the hidden strength that their material actually possesses. To demonstrate this, watch what happens when I lay this 2x4 across two supports and stand on it. Its thickness is bearing all of my weight. And as such, it can't support me without sagging or deflecting. But the thing is, the material still has far more strength to offer. And all I have to do to access that strength is alter its dimensional axis. By simply turning the board on edge, I can stand on it again. And now, not only does it have the strength to hold me, it could actually hold far, far more than my body weight. It could probably hold a car if necessary. By simply turning the board on edge, it doesn't just get twice as strong. It doesn't even get three times as strong. It literally gains something like the cube of its own strength. In other words, it becomes exponentially stronger. And this principle governs how we build everything. Look at deck joists or floor joists. They're all turn on edge for strength. And eye joists utilize skinny pieces of OSB trapped between wood or plywood flanges. That OSB is just a half inch thick and yet it can carry thousands of pounds of load. So when you're looking to add strength to a structure of any kind, Always remember this principle. Again, take a simple shelf for instance. I can make it from thin material, like half inch plywood, and it's as flimsy as can be. But if I cut something like inch and a half strips of that exact same plywood, turn those strips on edge, position them beneath the plywood shelf, and trap them there with a few nails, my shelf now has enough strength to hold my entire body. And those skinny supports don't necessarily have to be beneath the shelf. They can be attached to the edge as well. Face frames are often used to dress up the edge of a shelf, but they're not just for decoration. They also make the shelf stronger. By gluing and shooting narrow face frames to the edge, the shelf gains the applied support from the side. This means that the shelf can now bridge an even longer span without deflecting. It's not quite as strong as when the pieces were beneath it, but it's still considerably stronger. And if you start looking around, you'll see this effect everywhere. For instance, many dining tables and coffee tables incorporate it. The tabletop itself might be quite thin and it could never support much weight over multiple feet. But by adding a simple skirt piece turned on edge, the builder creates more than enough span strength. And they also create greater shear strength too, which keeps the table from wobbling. And climbing up into my shop attic, you'll see that it's built with trusses. But you also have this long skinny support running across the bottom cords like a spine. This is called a stiff back or a strong back. It's just some two by fours shot together perpendicularly, but the upright two by four provides the span strength while the prone two by four provides more nailing surface. Together, they create a very strong member that connects the trusses, prevents them from wobbling or sagging, and even creates a strong catwalk that lets you walk across the truss opening safely. You'll sometimes see this arrangement used in older houses with dimensional joists. If one of the ceiling joists is low, you can pump it up, attach it to a strong back, and it'll stay put and gain load support from adjacent members. Carpenters will sometimes refer to this practice as teeing up. This just means connecting a perpendicular member to a flat member to create this T shape. And the strength gained here is really bi-directional. This board's weak dimension gains strength from this board's strong dimension. And likewise, this board's weak dimension gains strength from the other board's strong dimension. That's what makes this a perfect structure. 
It's just extraordinary how much strength you can produce by simply turning materials on edge. So when you're planning your projects and you're confronting long open spans, remember this on edge principle and you'll be able to provide greater span strength wherever you need it. I hope that's helpful. Again, be sure to get your copy of the Ultimate Carpentry Checklist down below and visit us at thehonestcarpenter.com to see our other free materials. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you'll consider subscribing. I'm Ethan James with thehonestcarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.